Hi everybody, I'm Andrew Locke. Welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. Today it's another gear review. We're having a look at the fiddle from Luxley. So this is Luxley's first pocket light, so it has a built-in battery. The unit boasts a CCT range from 2,800 Kelvin all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin, a full HSI color mode, built-in gels libraries, and via a phone app, you can operate special effects. Let's take a look. All right, so before we get too far into the review, just the usual disclaimers. Um, Luxley sent me this unit for me to review, so I didn't pay for it, uh, just to let you know that. And uh, I won't be going into the phone app in great detail because I've already done another video on the phone app, so it's the same phone app. If you've looked at Luxley before, well, I'll just go over the differences between this and their other small LEDs. So this one, of course, has a built-in battery. So that built-in battery will run this unit at full power at 5,600 Kelvin for three hours and 35 minutes. That's the runtime that I got. Um, so that's a very impressive long runtime. It does take three hours to charge the battery though. So we'll get into all that detail a little bit later in the video. Uh, the next difference between this and their previous lights, their previous lights, uh, the small lights, have, were very well constructed out of a very uh, solid compound plastic. This one is made of metal. Okay, so very, very solid. And the one thing I really like about it is the screws. So. Uh, you've got your threads for your spigots, and they're a very deep thread, okay? So, you know, no cinematographer is going to pan this, try and pan this, and crack the housing, uh, which is what happened on some of my other Luxley products. So not a fault of design, it's just um, a fault of operator. So, um, look, that's not going to happen on these. Yeah, it's such a, a well well engineered deep thread, but very well constructed housing. The user interface is largely the same sort of logic, but it has changed a little bit. So we've got two rollers here. And uh, to turn the unit on, flick the switch across. And then to change your light modes, you flick the button across. So you've got three light modes that you can operate manually. Now the front of the light consists of an array of lenses. So underneath each lens is a group of emitters. So the emitters consist of red, green, blue, uh, white, and amber. Now the amber is a broad spectrum emitter that enables this light to get really high color scores uh, down in its low kelvins. All right, so let's go through operating this thing. So let's go through our CCT or white light mode first. So our bottom roller, I'll do that first, is our brightness. So I'll just turn that up to full blast and I'll, I'll kill everything else in the room. So there we go, going to black. Now our top roller does our CCT. So we can adjust that in 50 Kelvin increments if we move the rocker slowly. If we move it faster, it adjusts in higher uh, or faster increments or higher increments. Now, if we give it quick flicks, it'll scroll between presets. So let's give it a flick up, 3200. Give it another flick, 43. Give it another flick, 56 and so on. All right, now when you operate this thing off the phone app, you also have plus minus green capability. Now, one thing I'm gonna cover now before I forget is the lenses. The lenses give you a 72 degree beam angle. Now, if you want a soft spread, uh, they do have a clip-on diffuser. Now, I can't show you this clip-on diffuser because I'm currently in the past. In the present where you are, this is now available, but I filmed this in the past, so it wasn't available at that time. You're now in the future, which is the present, so you can get it. Yeah, that's correct. All right, let's get into the next mode of operation. So to get to the next mode of operation, you uh, click the slider across, okay? And that is our color mode. Okay, so in the color mode, we have all 360 uh, color hues. Now, if I click the roller in small increments, we can adjust in one degree increments. If I roll faster, we can scroll quicker. If I give it quick flicks, it'll jump to our primary and secondary colors. Now, our bottom roller does our brightness. Okay, so um, operating it manually, you can't desaturate the colors. So it's not the best HSI or best HSL mode that's out there, but operating it off the phone app, not only can you desaturate your colors with a white light, but you can select the Kelvin or the CCT at which you're desaturating to, which makes this over a phone app the most comprehensive HSI mode that's available in the pocket light format. 
Now the next mode of operation is gels mode. So there's 150 options in this gels mode. So what's really handy here is let's say you're doing a small chroma key setup and you don't have a green screen or a blue screen, gels one and two are chroma key blue and chroma key green. All right, so before we get too, too much further into the gels, we're gonna hop back to the CCT mode, okay? The white light mode, okay? So let's do that. So I'm just gonna scroll until we get to white light mode. Now in the white light mode, we can select a CCT, which is um, our Kelvin. And then if we go back to our gels mode, that CCT we selected is now the base CCT that the gels are applied to. Now we've covered all the manual operations, so there's just three modes, but in the phone app, you also have special effects. Now you've got the usual suspects like cop car and lightning and all that sort of stuff. But the one thing that works really, really good is fire. It has a beautiful gentle roll off. So let's have a look at that. So we can select the different types of fire mode. We've got candle at the moment, but we can select, uh, we can select a campfire or bonfire mode. Uh, candle I think looks the best. Uh, and we can select how much it flickers. So we can have no wind, we can select breeze, uh, we can select windy, uh, we can go over the top crazy and have storm uh, where it's really flickery. But I think for me, um, you know, no wind or, or breezy is the best, but it really does, you know, the candle mode really, or the fire mode really is beautiful. It has beautiful roll offs on it. It actually looks convincing. Now the Fiddle has an 18 watt LED light engine. That's a lot of firepower for a pocket light. Now to give you some idea, I did a shootout at one meter. It comes in at four times brighter than the Aperture MC and a little over two and a half times brighter than the Nanlite 6C Pavo tube. Now having an 18 watt light engine does have one setback. You can't power it off a USB 2 battery. If you try to, it'll come up with a message telling you that you need at least nine volts. Now the light powers and charges off a USB-C port and the light is supplied with USB-C to USB-C cable and a little charger power supply. Now this can charge the light and simultaneously run it at full power. And it does come with a long enough lead that you could put the light into position on set and run it off AC power. Now the internal battery can power the light for three and a half hours at full brightness. Now to give you some idea of just how long that is, when you get this battery warning, you've got about 40 minutes left. Now from completely flat, you can charge the internal battery to full power in three hours. Now the next thing that's a huge improvement with this light over its predecessors is the firmware updating. This now happens over the phone app and not only is it way easier, it happens in a matter of seconds. All right, time to go through the, uh, all the technical data I've uh, collected. So I just want to point out that I've collected all this data uh, with my spectrometer. So this is my data, not the manufacturer's data. Now, the next thing I want to point out is uh, this is a calibrated light engine. Now, usually with a calibrated light engine, when you dial in a target CCT value, um, the spectrometer will read sometimes below, sometimes above that uh, target value, which is normal. Um, however, this time round, my spectrometer has read above on all of the readings. So that's, that's a lot of readings and the spectrometer has read uh, over on every single reading. So that indicates to me that my spectrometer is reading a little bit high. Um, I'm guessing about 40 Kelvin. Now, um, having a look, uh, Luxley also supply you with uh, photometric data for your individual light. And having a look at uh, their readings, their variation on Kelvin, uh, it confirms my suspicion that my spectrometer is reading uh, over by about 40 Kelvin. Okay, so bear that in mind when we go through the readings. Now, 40 Kelvin is well within the specifications of the spectrometer. Okay, so uh, even a fully calibrated spectrometer will read out by plus or minus 3%, and they will drift depending on things like temperature, if they've been bumped, anything like that. All right, so let's get into the technical data. Now, bear in mind, again, I think my spectrometer is reading out by 40 Kelvin. All right, so we're just gonna go through CCT accuracies. Between 2,800 Kelvin and 4,000 uh, Kelvin, the, the average that the, uh, I was reading over the target value was plus 62 Kelvin, okay? Even if that was correct, uh, that's amazing, plus 62 Kelvin. Between 4,000 Kelvin and 5,000 Kelvin, the average, um, the 
target value was off was 54 Kelvin. And between 5,000 Kelvin and 6,000 Kelvin, uh, that was out uh, by an average of plus 32 Kelvin. Now those readings uh, verify uh, what is uh, on their graph here, on their individual, on the data that's individually collected for the light by the manufacturer. Okay, next thing we'll talk about is um, color render. So I do my, my color render scores, I use um, TN30 color vector tests. I don't use uh, CRI or TLCI. Okay, 2800 uh, Kelvin, we got a color score of 94, which is pretty good. All right, from 2850 Kelvin all the way up to 5450 Kelvin, we got a score of 95, which is staggeringly high for an LED light. Then from 5,500 Kelvin to 5,900 Kelvin, we got a score of 94. That's, uh, that's very good. Now the next thing we'll talk about is uh, white point accuracy. So uh, we're talking about how much the light varies off the Planckian curve. The Planckian curve is what is perceived to be white light. Um, if it's a plus figure, it means it's got some green hue. If it's a negative figure, it means it's got some pink hue. The closer to zero we are, the better. Now to give you uh, some idea of range, the lightest correction gel you can get is the equivalent of 0 0.0024 increments, okay? So 0 0.0024. All right, between 2,800 Kelvin and 4,000 Kelvin, uh, the light was accurate to typically 0 minus 0 0.0006. So imperceivably, um, imperceivable amount of hue. Between 4,000 Kelvin and 5,000 Kelvin, it was accurate to typically plus 0 0.0006. Uh, delta UV, and between 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin, it was staggeringly accurate to typically plus 0 0.0004 Delta UV. So what does that mean in English? It means if you change your Kelvin, you are not going to get any pink or green hue in the light whatsoever. Let's take a look at our more commonly used Kelvins. So at 3,200 Kelvin, I got 3,259 with an SSI score of 84. The TN30 color vector score was 95%. Here is the spectrum analysis. And the light has virtually no color hue with a delta UV score of minus 0 0.0007. When I dialed in 4,400 Kelvin, I got 4,438 Kelvin with a TN30 color vector score of 95. Here is the wavelength analysis. And again, the white point accuracy was staggeringly good with a delta UV score of 0 0.0007. When I dialed in 5,600 Kelvin, I got 5,632 Kelvin with an SSI score of 74. The TN30 color vector score was 94%. Here is the wavelength analysis. And the white point was very close to perfect with a delta UV score of plus 0. 0 0.0004. Now let's have a look at how accurately the light generates color hues starting off with our primary colors. Red, which should be zero, came in at two degrees. Green, which should be 120 degrees, came in at 118 degrees. And blue was smack on target at 240 degrees. Now let's have a look at our secondary colors. Yellow, which should be 60, came in at 59 degrees. Cyan, which is 180 degrees, came in at 195 degrees. And magenta, which should be 300 degrees, came in at 301 degrees. Okay, that's another episode of Gaffer and Gear done. See you next week. Next week is another gear review, and it should be on the Titan and Helios snapbags from DOP Choice.